case three. Any takers? Take this one. All right. Uh, so for this power, uh, I noticed the kind of like bright pink, uh, like the Civic look, um, and it has a little bit of an annular appearance, um, which I, which I, I like because it correlates with the clinical findings as well. Um, and it kind of looks like those uh, more eosinophilic cells are kind of crawling through the collagen there. And this one has a, has a really good like annular appearance. Yeah. There, so that um, looks good for GA. Yeah, very good. So we've got from low power, there are cells uh, trickling in between or crawling between. I like that, that, um, that wording. That's really nice. Uh, crawling between the dermal reticular dermal collagen bundles, okay? And when we see any sort of cellular infiltrate in the dermis from low power that looks kind of gray or pink or pale, always think, could it be histiocytes? Then you can also think, could it be other things? Like, for example, uh, metastatic uh, lobular breast cancer. When it's in the skin, it can look uh, pretty similar to granuloma annulare. I've actually seen a case that was both clinically and microscopically mimicked, uh, mimicked a, a GA. Uh, so uh, this case, uh, they are histiocytes. The histiocytes crawling and trickling between the collagen. And then uh, what you want to see, like you said, is kind of a vague palisading or kind of a lining up like a little picket fence if you have a really good imagination kind of palisading of histiocytes around a central area of, uh, quote, unquote, necrobiosis, which basically means like degenerated collagen. And often there's going to be myxoid change or mucin in there. We can't really see that well on this slide. But usually there's a little bit of bluish mucin and the collagen looks kind of smudgy and degenerated. Sometimes it's really extensive and sometimes it's very subtle. In this case, I think the degeneration is kind of subtle. Uh, but the histiocytes are kind of wrapping around and it makes kind of a vague ring shape or annular shape. Like you said, I, I like that too and I find that very satisfying. That granuloma annulare is called that because clinically it looks annular or ring-like. But microscopically, probably just out of coincidence, you also see these little rings of histiocytes wrapping around uh, degenerated areas of collagen and mucin. It's pretty common to have inflammation. Uh, in the background with uh, granuloma annulare, including perivascular lymphs, and also eosinophils are often seen. So uh, that's a, a pretty common finding to see scattered EOs around there. And the, uh, the trickling between collagen looks a lot like the collagen entrapment that you'd see at the periphery of a dermatofibroma. So even though we don't usually think of like granuloma annulare and dermatofibroma as being in the same differential, because clinically they look very different, you know, and it'd be hard to uh, get those confused, I think. But microscopically, I think if you get a cut from the edge of a dermatofibroma and a cut from the edge of a granuloma annulare, they look quite similar. They're plump, histiocytic looking cells with trapping of collagen. And I would also add in a hypopigmented blue nevus into that differential because it also has, usually the cells are a little thinner and not as plump, but they do the same collagen trapping at the edge. So uh, those are three things that are really uh, kind of different categories of entity, but they can, can have areas that mimic one another. And, you know, up close, the cells are very bland. So uh, I do like to always look, though, and just think in my mind, is there any chance this could be carcinoma or something else? If so, add a keratin stain. That's a great way to, to help sort that out. All right. And there are other types of granulomatous disease that can, can look similar to granuloma annulare, uh, like granulomatous drug reaction, and uh, interstitial granulomatous dermatitis, which is kind of a, a granulomatous reaction pattern related to a variety of systemic processes. If you had uh, neutrophils plus this pattern, you could think of palisaded neutrophilic and granulomatous dermatitis, which is a PNGD, probably uh, kind of closely related to interstitial granulomatous dermatitis. Those are a kind of expanded differential to think about, and you can go do some reading on those uh, if you want to, to learn more about it. But basically, those are things that if you think it looks kind of like GA, but something's funny about it, either clinically or microscopically, those are some other entities that could look like this. In my experience, infection almost never produces the GA-like pattern of granulomas. Uh, so when I see this, I'm not really worrying about infection in this in this setting. Uh, one other thing I thought of when I first looked at this slide was actually like a xanthoma or xanthelasma because the cells are a little bit more frothy and foamy in this particular case than usual, but the uh, the mucin and the palisading would argue against that. But when I first looked at these slides going through it, I was like, oh, it sort of looks like a, xanth a xanthoma at first glance. So, and then here's another area. And so there's something called interstitial granuloma annulare, which basically is 
is just granular manular area where you don't get the good palisading. You just get the trickling histiocytes between collagen. I'm not totally sure if I believe that interstitial granuloma annularia is actually a, a separate thing. I kind of suspect that, that most cases are really just granuloma annularia where you're not sectioning into the middle of one of the palisades. You're just getting kind of the edge of it. So I, I don't know, maybe, maybe somebody out there disagrees with me, but I feel like I've, I've not seen that many cases and the ones that I had look kind of like that. And then I cut a little more and I found the, the kind of palisaded ring like areas. So anyway, take that for what you will.